most heroic thing we can do now. It's to look the truth in the face. The Night King is coming. The dead are already here. Hi everyone, it's Charlie. We're getting ready for the big episode 3 Battle of Winterfell against the Night King. HBO has been hyping it up all season long, getting everybody ready for this epic battle. But the really interesting thing is, is that Connolly Till, who plays Varys on the show, has been talking about Cersei, who he thinks is a much bigger threat than the Night King and the White Walkers, for a couple different reasons, which I think he's correct about. So HBO, just in typical fashion when it comes to Game of Thrones Season 8, has been trying to misdirect you a little bit to get you focusing on what they think is the obvious threat, instead of what the real threat is going to be by the end of the season. So I'll explain why that is and why Cersei is a bigger problem than the Night King, as big as the Night King and the White Walkers seem. They just want you to think that that's the biggest threat. Be sure to subscribe to get all the Game of Thrones videos if you're brand new to the channel. We're doing that HBO Now giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. Obviously, careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on Game of Thrones so far, but as of this weekend that I'm posting this video, we're getting ready for Season 8, Episode 3. Every promo, every trailer, every interview that HBO has released with the cast has been focused on hyping up the big battle of Winterfell against the Night King. They do this every year for a couple different reasons, Season 8 even more so because it is the big final season. One, they understandably want people to notice that they're breaking a couple of records before Emmy nominations go out. It's the final season, they spent something like over a hundred million dollars in more than a year making these six episodes, so it's understandable that they want people to pay attention to what they're calling the biggest, longest battle in TV history. Longer than the battle of Helm's Deep and Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, which was about 40 minutes long. That's why you keep hearing people talk about the battle of Helm's Deep when they talk about episode 3. Episode 3 is supposed to be 1 hour and 18 minutes long, which is one of the longest episodes that they've had in the history of the show. So you imagine that maybe a little bit less than that is the actual battle itself. So way longer than the 40 minute Helm's Deep battle. But 2, the other big reason why they've been pushing the Night King and all the marketing as the big villain of the season is because they know that people expect it. He is one of the core villains of the show, regardless of what you think the real threat is, and they still want to be a very twist driven show this late in the game. Like everybody talks about the big moments on Game of Thrones, the biggest twist, like during Winds of Winter in season six when Cersei blew up the Great Sept. Nobody was expecting them to do something that epic until they saw that they were seeding that with all the wildfire and Kyburn telling her, oh, we found some more, much, much more. So remember, Game of Thrones is a show that trades on those big twist moments, but they've been hyping up the White Walkers and the Night King since season one as this real threat, literally and metaphorically walking death that they have to stop. Core operating narrative structure of the show being set up, payoff, and reversal. They spend seven seasons setting up the White Walkers as this big threat. Brand gave us the stakes in the explainer in episode two last week, the show's way of explaining the mythology behind the Night King. This is what he wants to do. He wants endless night. He wants to eliminate man as a species. The next step in that narrative would be to pay off that setup, which is what this big battle is going to be during episode three. Presumably, obviously, big twist within each episode. I don't think that the battle with the Night King is going to end with episode three. But even then, in the grand scheme of things, Jon Snow and Daenerys eventually defeat said Night King. It just probably won't happen during episode three, but it'll eventually happen later this season. But eventually they do defeat him. That should mean that they've saved the realm, right? Because the payoff to killing the Night King is, is supposed to end the threat to the realm. But here's the thing, it doesn't though, big twist, because the next step in that narrative is the reversal, setup, payoff, reversal. The reversal is the surprise twist you never saw coming, or maybe you did see it because you were expecting them to do this. In this case, the reversal is Cersei becomes a bigger problem for the realm than the Night King was for a couple reasons. One being she's created so much chaos while Jon Snow and Daenerys are still trying to fight the Night King. Cersei is making things way harder than they need to be by double crossing them, not sending the extra Lannister soldiers she promised, then turning around, taking out a massive loan from the Iron Bank, putting the crown back into serious debt, only to use that money to hire 20,000 Golden Company mercenaries to destroy any of Jon Snow and Daenerys' forces that just happened to survive the Night King and the White Walkers during this episode 3 battle. On top of that, she set Bronn to the task of killing Tyrion and Jaime using the crossbow that Tyrion used to kill Tywin during season 4. I've already made a few death predictions about the big characters in episode 3, but regardless of which big characters they decide to kill off, the White Walkers are going to carve down most of their armies standing there. 
So much so that Cersei will have an overwhelming advantage even though she only has the Golden Company and her Lannister forces. Remember, she also has the extra Lannister troops that she did not send north. So even though there are only 20,000 Golden Company members and no elephants, much to her chagrin, there's still those extra Lannister soldiers she has. She also has Kyburn's giant scorpions for killing Daenerys' remaining two dragons. She doesn't know about the Night King having Viserion yet, but there's also probably still more wildfire hidden underneath King's Landing. She's probably kept the pyromancers busy, even if she did burn up most of the Mad King's wildfire that he had hid under King's Landing during Robert's Rebellion. Her new weapon might be the scorpion, is even in the intro, they go down into King's Landing beneath the Iron Throne and you see that giant scorpion pointing at Balerion the Black Dread. They really want you to remember that she has those scorpions, but her real main weapon this whole time has been Wildfire and her ability to make the worst possible decision for the realm at any given time. Which means pots falling, which means fire inside the walls, which means the poor c**ts trying to defend the city end up burning it down. We have been working tirelessly day and night, ever since your royal sister commanded us to do so. The contents of this room could lay King's Landing low. So even though the Night King is more of a traditional threat to the realm, Cersei is an even bigger problem. Right now, the advantage that Jon Snow and Daenerys have over the Night King that they do not have over Cersei is that the Night King just has numbers in his favor. He has a lot of special abilities, he has Viserion, but he has the ability to raise the dead, so he can exponentially grow his forces during the battle as things get worse and worse. The more of their forces that he kills, the more that he can add to his army. The thing that Cersei has that the Night King does not have is intimate knowledge of all the northern forces, all the big players, the main characters. She has a lot more info about how to twist the knife so to speak and given the opportunity i think that she'd sooner burn them all mad king style than give up the iron throne to daenerys and Jon snow she'll do anything she can to keep herself on the iron throne regardless of what's left of the realm after the night king so i realize that's ignoring a lot of the relationship politics that are going on between Jon snow and daenerys right now sansa and daenerys over the fate of the north after the battle that all just happened during episode two but all of that is unimportant until they deal with the night king then deal with cersei and there is no scenario in all this where the realm is better off with Cersei on the Iron Throne. If she's ruthless and calculating now because she thinks she's fighting for this baby of hers she's growing that belongs to Jaime that Euron thinks is going to be his eventually. This second chance she keeps talking about is a chance for us to start over before Jaime left her. How mad is she going to go when she loses the baby probably later this season and metaphorically has nothing left? A ruthless person with nothing left to lose and near unlimited resources thanks to high interest loans from the Iron Bank is way worse for them than the Night King. The funny thing in all this too is that it seems like at the end of all this the Iron Bank sounds like kind of a villain too for being such an enabler and being so quick to put the realm back into super debt. Like would you like another loan? We're really happy taking your interest money. Please take as long as you like paying this back. We really love those high interest payments you're making on this. Even funnier, they're not going to forgive those loans when the war is over, so Jon Snow and Daenerys wind up winning the day. They're still going to have to repay all of Cersei's debt that she took out because it's the crown's debt. Just like Cersei had to repay all of Robert Baratheon's debt that Littlefinger helped put him in during the course of his reign. So let me know in the comments, beyond trying to get rid of Tyrion, Jaime, and the Northern Army, what other epically crazy things do you think that Cersei is going to do towards the end of the season to try and keep herself on the Iron Throne while they're also trying to deal with the Night King? Think about it more from the perspective of how she can make their situation worse. Like, as bad as it is trying to fight the army of the dead, the Night King, the White Walkers, you also have Cersei trying to destroy you at every single turn. I also think from a payoff perspective at the end of the season, it also makes more sense that they hype Cersei up as the real villain of the show, just because Game of Thrones is a show that trades on betrayal. The whole concept of a Game of Thrones is all about people betraying other people for the Iron Throne. So of course there are probably going to be several more huge betrayals between the characters before the show is done. I think the thing that people aren't expecting though is that there'll be some betrayal within Jon Snow and Daenerys' forces, so that'll be really interesting to see the last couple of episodes. So don't be surprised if there are some big twists during the episode 3 big battle this weekend, but obviously my episode 3 video will post after the episode airs on Sunday night, and I'll keep the giveaway open till Monday when I post my episode 4 trailer video. 
the really cool thing about the next couple of episodes, too, is that Miguel Sapochnik originally said that they wanted him to do episode three, four, and five, and he was like, there's no way I can handle that, because he's mostly known for doing their big battle episodes, like Hard Home and Battle of the Bastards, so that's why you're seeing him do episode three and episode five, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's another big battle during episode five, but I don't think it's going to be quite as big as the battle during episode three, the way they've been hyping it up. So everybody just get hype while you wait for everything, click here for my Season 8 Episode 3 trailer video, and click here for my Season 8 Episode 2 video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody stay awesome, I'll see you guys tonight.